Well, we're a bunch of filmmakers. We're making web series, and there are five series here today represented uh, in alphabetical order. We have microwave porn. We have out with dad. We have Ruby Sky. We've the yet to be premiered Pretty and Geek. And then over there we've got Tights and Fights. We're semi alphabetical. Semi alphabetical. Oh, yeah, that was. <laughs> and I can't spell, apparently. Uh, oh, you did Big Bird would be so right. disappointed you, in you right now. You did it right. Did I do it right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, I, I don't know my outfit. So, what we're going to do is we're going to each, we're, we're each going to take a couple minutes to sort of introduce ourselves, our show, maybe a bit about why we did it, perhaps. And uh, we're going to try and keep the introductions as short as possible, but of course, there's five of us. Uh, because our idea is that we want to leave as much time at the end so that you guys can ask questions and hopefully we'll start a discussion and, and it'll all be groovy. So how does if that sound? If anybody wants to ask questions via Twitter, use the PodCamp PCTO2011 hashtag and we will answer them that way. Brilliant. I like you. Uh, so do you want me to start with your, um, your clip or do you want to talk first? Let's do the clip first. The All right. Yeah. So this is a clip from Microwave Porn, produced I here in Toronto, good. right? Previously on Microwave Porn. My parents have a cottage. There's no porn here. Oh my God! He microwaved the van. We're trapped. On a dark and stormy night, when Dave was fast asleep, a bolt of mystical lightning. Brought his microwave to life. Now the microwave's alive and it's addicted to porn. But Dave is an architect and Dave is pushing 30. So Dave is pushing 30 and the boy just needs a girlfriend. But it's not easy, especially when your microwave has behavioral issues. I have a problem. How could you microwave the van? There's nothing back there for us. We're gonna start a new cleaner life, living off the land, porn free. Just Dave, Alan, Jennifer, and the Lord. The Lord? Last night I found God. Alan! You must change your pornful way! Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. This is the voice of the ghost of God! God? Doesn't the finite nature of space-time make your existence redundant? Gotta go. So that's the deal. I'm off to porn, but I'm hooked on God. Alan, that's ridiculous. Don't you take his name in vain! I didn't even say you... Shh! Dave, be at one with the land. At one! <laughs> Mountain man! He's a mountain man, living off the land. I don't know. Are these on? These are on? Yeah, it's on. I have no scared of my microwave. Okay, so I am, yeah, you should be. He's, he's terrifying. Uh, I am Ash Catherwood. I am 25% uh, of the Cancel Proof team. Uh, the others could not be here today because they are currently on set filming some more episodes of this most epic series. Um, basically, we all came from a film background, um, and we were a little bit frustrated uh, pitching some outlandish ideas to, uh, to some of the more conservative networks. And so uh, our, whole, our whole reason for, for approaching the web series um, medium was to uh, allow ourselves some freedom that we weren't otherwise uh, given. In, 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 a, in, a, in a super professional sense. Um, Heather Dahlstrom, our producer, comes from a film production background. She's had some, some films in uh, Sundance, things like that. Ryan Keller, the director, he's, uh, he's been directing comedy for years. He's, uh, he's worked with Second City. Uh, he had some, some Canadian comedy nominations. James Ross has been writing for years. I've been acting for years. Uh, so it was all just... Uh, we have a very specific angle that we're coming from, and um, you know, uh, the web is pretty much the only place that we found that welcomes us, um, and, and it's fantastic. It's it's allowed us a lot of freedom. It's uh, right now I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, I mean, any any time you're you're dealing with networks, you have to deal with um, a 
all kinds of input that you're not necessarily going to jive with all the time. And, uh, and so that, yeah, that, that's, that's the intro. There you go. Uh, I think I'll <clears throat> fall suit with uh, just showing this uh, highlight reel um, that I cut together just the other day. We were our series was nominated for a Webby Award, or shortlisted for a Webby Award, yes. and uh, so they asked me to send the judges a three-minute highlight reel. So hopefully this is the best part. So I don't know, you can tell me. Um, so that's why it says for your consideration at the end. <laughs> Dad, I have something to tell you. Tell her it'll be okay. Tell her she can tell you anything. You can tell me anything. Oh my god. It's like he's reading off a pamphlet or something. Oh my god, you're making this worse. Have you ever wanted to kiss a girl? No. Well, maybe we should. Just, you know, see. Look, I know you always say you and me are more like brother and sister, but I just wanted to make sure that truly, in fact, you are okay with me going out with other girls. Like, people are always saying we're like a couple. I really like you. I'm gay. That makes so much sense. What? Something's bothering her and she won't tell me what. Boy troubles? It's not that, but it sort of is. I think Rose might be gay. Still need to tell my dad. I think he suspects anyway. He nearly walked in on me and Van You and Vanessa? Oh, hi, Vanessa. Is everything okay? Is Vanessa all right? She seemed a little... Yeah, she's cool. It's just that I'm not even sure of anything anyways. So it doesn't matter. I hope we'll love something soon But right now I can't see this through You're wondering about Rose, aren't you? Yeah, I am. What's that off your radar? I, I guess it's Vanessa. The best friend? But I can't love you If I can't agree So just skip the cliches And set us free Sideswept I've fallen for you I've fallen so hard that I any good romance story is all about conflict, right? And when they finally do get together, they break them up again. And what's the most heart-wrenching form of conflict? Forbidden love. It's just that when I imagine it, picture it, it freaks me out. You know that I'm there for you to listen anytime. Okay. You okay? Still trying to figure that out. That's my work series. I uh, came up with the idea like about a year or well, two years ago now, and uh, my God, it's been two years. It's crazy. Uh, creating web series sucks the life out of you, <laughs> as anyone will attest to, because. Um, I, I wanted to make a web series uh, for very similar reasons. It's just, you know, who do I go to to pitch an idea? Uh, I'll admit, I was totally inspired by Felicia Day. She just sort of went out and did it. And I'm like, she did it, I can do it. Okay, let's just give it a go. So I entered into it without any sort of business plan or direct strategy. I was just, you know, I just started writing, started, you know, found a cast, shot it, threw it out there. And, um, and now I'm trying to figure out how to make a web series, or at least how to make a web series known is perhaps a better way of putting it. So now it's getting into whole social networking and promoting. Like we haven't done any formal advertising, well, traditional maybe, I don't know how you say it, but we haven't advertised in that, you know, we haven't put up posters or we haven't made buttons like these guys have, which I think are pretty cool. Um, but, you know, we just started telling people through the web and, uh, and then some uh, lesbian-centric websites, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, caught wind of us. They asked, you know, can we start showing your show on our site? I'm like, hell yes. 
And, uh, and that's the great thing about YouTube is that you can embed wherever you want to go and um, you know all those views count back to you. So that's been our sort of big thing and it's just, yeah, it's figuring out how to tell people about it. So that in itself is almost a full-time job. I haven't found someone to take over that part for me because I'm trying to write season two now and uh, I, I, I was literally writing it on the streetcar on the way over here because that, that was, you know, ten minutes I had to myself to write. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So anyways, I think That'll be my bit of an intro. So now shall we move over to uh, Ruby Sky? No, it's pretty Oh, sorry, my alphabetizing skills are showing once again. <laughs> do you want to say something first? I do. All right. <laughs> I think I'm special. And so Pretty Unique is a forthcoming web series we just wrapped about Less than a month ago. <laughs> so what we're showing you is our like super special rough cut trailer that nobody else has seen. So we're really excited about it. Um, and uh, just a bit of an intro, it's about a bunch of gamer girls who play D&D. Except it's not D&D, it's a very similar style to D&D. It's an <laughs> unnamed fantasy role playing game of some sort. So uh, Jason, if you could roll that please. All right. What do you mean girl gamers don't exist? What do I look like to you? A night elf? No. Look, you have to leave your house to find us. Oh, and uh, don't forget the deodorant. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm being judgmental. I can own you. Hey, I can min-max like a pro. Gamer girls can kick gamer guys' asses any time of the day or night. Or whatever. Think I can't? Oh, I'll prove it. You just name the time and place. Hell. I'll even bring the dice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, and the best part of that is that we didn't even tell her to take the dice out of her cleavage. She did that all by herself. <laughs> she, she did bring her own dice. She really did actually bring her own dice. Uh, we were very lucky in getting actors who were already into the scene. Um, but yeah, just as an intro to that, we are uh, we are going to be live in May. <laughs> I'm going to say that and have my producers kill me. Um, and we have been in development for this show, similar to Jason, for about a year and a half. So it does take quite a while to get everything kind of going. And we had a really great team behind us. Um, we are starting into season two, hopefully soon. <laughs> they also don't know this. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, uh, we're, you know, we're gonna kind of hit, one of the reasons we did this show was just for me, especially because I used to play D&D, possibly. Uh, it was just that there are girls who play D&D out there. I wanted to like showcase that. It's a lot of fun, it's a great comedy. Uh, we're gonna be, we are on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and we are on YouTube right now, so check us out, Pretty and Geek. Uh, Facebook.com slash Pretty and Geek. Twitter.com slash Pretty and Geek. Please follow us. And that's my intro. Okay, so um, I'm Jill Garlick, this is Carrie Young over here. We uh, represent a web series called Ruby Sky PI. It's a little bit different than what these other guys have done because we are aimed at a children's marketplace. So our show is about a tween detective and our audience is around 6 to 14 years old. Uh, we have 12 episodes up in our first season. Uh, which is called uh, The Spam Scam, in which Ruby solves um, a mystery uh, that comes out of her uh, neighbor dis uh, discovering that her neighbor has fallen victim to the Nigerian email scam. <laughs> so um, maybe we'll show the, um, the this is a trailer for the whole show. You should have seen it, Griffin. The way she was starving her stuffed animals. I'm gonna investigate this. We're all cutting back a little, so we have a little more to share. With who, Mrs. Goosh? A prince. She fell for this? I humbly write you this email with tears to seek your kind help for our furry friends. The email was sent from our school. If we don't get the money back, we're gonna lose our home. Whoever stole Mrs. Goosh's money has been inside of our school. The scammer could be someone we know. I'm Ruby Sky. Vinny? Janitor? What about my teacher's new boyfriend? Guess who I just saw? Why is Griffin researching the Nigerian scam? We call it a rock. 
Your son's friend here, Ruby Sky, has evidence showing that Griffin is involved in a string of email frauds. You're collecting evidence against me? Well, technically, yes, but I didn't think you were guilty most of the time. You looking for a new job? I got an email. A note from a Nigerian prince? Sort of a club now, isn't it? Thank you. Um, so, um, I come from a television background. I've written a lot of television, and Carrie comes from a, a film background. Uh, and um, I guess, you know, I came to this show because uh, children's television, television doesn't do genre anymore. They only do sitcom and animation. So, you couldn't do a kids' mystery show on television. So, it was like, okay. Well, then we'll take it to the web. And what you brought was... Well, we, we found it was a natural fit, as I'm sure you guys have found too, that, to bring independent filmmaking model to doing web series. Um, because we are leaner and we can work quickly with low budgets. And we just found it was a good marriage. So, but, you know, we, we, one of the things we tried to do with, with Ruby is to bring incredible production value to our show so that... Um, we could, I mean, because we did go in with a business plan, so we knew we wanted to be able to play it on any screen, no matter where we were. So our, our shooting quality is good enough to go on television, to play in a movie theater, to be on, you know, your iPad, your iPod, your anything. And we're looking at all different ways to distribute the show. We also sort of have a very transmedia approach to the production in the sense that we're not just looking at this as a web series, but we're looking at all the platforms that we can bring different versions of Ruby Sky to. So that's Ruby Sky PI. <laughs> So do you guys want me to play this, or do you want to speak no, first? Yeah. first? Okay. Hi. Hi, I'm Courtney. I'm with uh, Gopher X here, and uh, we also helped Elise get Free and Geek off the ground. And uh, we've been doing Tights and Fights, uh, which is an IPF-funded web series from last year. And uh, roll the clip. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay, wait. No, yeah. wait. <laughs> so, a little bit of background. Um, the series is massive, 180 episodes. <laughs> And what we're going to show here is basically the trailer that went out before the second set of 60, kind of like we call them chapters. So there's three 60 episode chapters. And this is so you already have 80 some episodes to catch oh, up on if you want to go watch it. <laughs> yeah, we've been online since uh, October. So you can check us out at titsandfights.com or pick up one of our handy flyers here. And how, how often do you post a new episode? I can't remember. In the first 60, we were doing between four and eight a week, and we've, we've slowed it down to two or three a week. And, um, do we already have yeah, a question? How long, are the, you know, how long is each episode? Um, the shortest so far has been 37 seconds. The longest so far has been six and a half minutes. And ours range in length from about three to six minutes. <clears throat> yeah, we're, we're, you'll, see, you'll see by the, by the clips here, um, our series is a little bit unique because it's, uh, it's meant to be in like a YouTube style. So uh, no one's talked about the, the show, but it's, it's superheroes doing video diaries and then there's uh, the, the characters themselves do live tweets and blogs and Facebook posts. And so it's a full uh, social networking show and story. So our stuff isn't really, it's not really like a TV show. It's, it's, uh, it's talking head video diary stuff, and the idea is that it's just about um, superheroes not really doing superhero stuff, but like living their lives and having marital problems and <laughs> trying to get jobs and trying to get girlfriends. Uh, so the idea is the confessional part of it is to kind of get behind the mask and into like their intimate details. Um, well, we have regular transmedia activities where the user's <laughs> audience can engage and talk with each other over Twitter and Facebook and really engage with the show. Let's okay. just hop to it. <laughs> <laughs>
people telling me that I look like or that I am Captain Euchre. So with Leopard Woman missing and with very little choice, we are reluctantly and legally obligated to accept you as our newest member. I'm taking the chains and justice! Courage of a life! So to do is save Leopard Woman. Am I an idiot? Yes! So to do, come back alive. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been doing a web series for, I don't know, six years or something. Um, we started before YouTube, um, when iTunes was just starting to do video. Um, one of our sh first series, Ash, was the star of. So uh, <laughs> came in and held his audition and made a uh, show that was called Team Leader. Um, and we've just been, since then, just working and learning about the process and what goes into a series. Um, and, you know, why make a series? Well, uh, a lot of the same things have already been said, but the main thing is that there's no way to, like a short film is not really a viable enterprise, it hasn't been for quite a while, um, besides a festival circuit. So if you want to have um, kind of enough content to show, also like they used to have programs for calling card short films, and they've kind of gotten rid of that. So uh, the web series is kind of a way to show, yeah, we can do a television show, we can do a longer form narrative, episodic narrative. Um, but don't forget, you're doing something <clears throat> that you can't do on television, and that's the transmedia aspect, right? Sure. Like, you know, yeah, apparently, well, someone was just saying that Supernatural just did it the other day, where someone tweeted on, on air and it showed up then live, right? But, oh. but um... There's but like, very little of that yeah. going on. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not, that medium isn't absolutely. conducive to transmedia, whereas the web is, and, and I think that's what makes, um, nice. like, we're, yeah. I would dad isn't really doing that, like, I just, you know, I just, like, oh, let's just do a story and but, tell it, right? That's, that's what we've done in the past. We have, like, four other shows where it's, yeah. right, let's just go, go and film it, and well, then yeah, afterwards have, think about it. <laughs> I have this theory about how the web, um, has reestablished the, the basic relationship between the storyteller and their audience. You know, I mean, mass media cuts you off from your audience. You're when you're writing TV, like you're on a whole other project by the time the audience is looking at your show. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with film. But when you're on the web, like your audience is right there talking to you every minute. You're giving direct feedback after yeah. every episode, which has I know that like that's specifically influenced our storytelling. Like we set out to yeah. do six episodes, each one was going to be about five minutes long, and our first episode went out that was six minutes long, and the overwhelming feedback that we got was, this is way too short, I'm like, oh. And like, they were angry at me for being so short, so I started adding up episodes to make them longer, and then we ended up shooting some more, and, and, and that, those, the new episodes were informed by the audience uh, feedback. Um, love your stuff and, and congratulations. I have a lot of questions, but the first one that comes to mind is uh, how, how are you financing this? Are you getting any government funding? What is there a revenue model that exists? And secondly, are you hoping that you'll get enough uh, viewers online or so that you could uh, get picked up by the network that you hate so much? <laughs> One of us is different here, so maybe we'll go around the table and just talk about that. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll start. Um, so we were financed by the IPF for Tyson Fights, but we... What's, IPF? what's IPF? Independent Production Fund. We're Independent acronym production happy, fund, sorry. Which is basically a, um, uh, a funding body that is mandated by the CRTC. The channels have to contribute money to... No, the IPF is a privately held fund, actually. Who, Probably who contributed to it? It's it's, it's <laughs> privately endowed. They're, By they're, who? I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> I never heard who endowed them. So anyway, it's run by the Bell, the Bell New yeah. Media people. Yeah. So it's kind of under their it's umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's for Canadians, though? Like, yeah, it was, they, they've only, they only offered the fund once. Our two projects got, were lucky enough to be among, I think, 11, 11? projects yeah. that got financing from them. And they, 
liked it, so they're doing a, a second call, and the deadline is Tuesday. What are you doing here? <laughs> In general, it's a good question. They don't fund stuff that's already started. Where yeah. we don't qualify. Um, you have to like design your show for the resources that you can bring bear mm -hmm. if you're not being financed. So we did previous series as well as previous tights and fights, and it was just self-financed and like pretty geek self-financed. And as long as you keep your ambitions to like a like a scale, controllable scale, um, just like a short film, it's it's achievable. So Christopher, what about revenue, and what about do you want to go on TV? <laughs> um, I, just like to, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I'd just like to say that like, if your first question is money, you're not going to go into web series. Yeah. <laughs> like, it'll never, it'll, it's, I don't think anyone here has, I think everyone here has done their shows way before they had any idea of if someone was going to pay them to do oh, their shows. Yes. Yeah. I don't think anyone here started it because I've always like money to spend. My line that I use all the time is, if someone gives me a million dollars to do it on TV, I won't say no to them. But uh, it was, yeah, it was just, you know, I did kind of the Kevin Smith way. I just used my credit card and made it. <laughs> well, and that, but that's the most valuable resource that we've had is is the, the folks that helped out. Like, you know, we've, our entire cast was volunteer. The crew was volunteer. The music, the award-winning music, uh, we just won an award in New York City. About music. And, uh, they, the musicians gave us their music. Like it's it's pretty pretty awesome what you can get when you ask for help, right? And um, and I also sacrificed a significant amount of sleep and therefore health. <laughs> you know, uh, but I think that's something we can all. I, my horse, my voice is still hoarse actually. I, I think I think it's it's an important distinction, um, worth as opposed to cost, um, because. Using favors and contacts and friends and colleagues, uh, you can cut down on, on front end costs uh, a great deal. And so, like our episodes are worth far, like in in terms of labor and, and yes. equipment and everything, they're worth far more than we actually spend on the front. End. Probably a hundred times more. Yeah. Like, like can, I ask, astronomical can I ask more. you guys a question? Uh, because this is the case with us. Like when it, you're talking to like actual dollars. Was your catering between 80 and 90 percent of your budget? Absolutely. Because <laughs> that's effectively your labor costs, right? It was. Right? And gas. It still was. Gas. Yeah, well, yes. Yes. <laughs> and the, the other 10 percent. So, so um, we had we had a combination. We we had money from the independent production fund, and we had um, sponsorship, in kind donation, uh, and deferrals that kind of would you say quadruple, quintupled our budget. <laughs> And definitely quadrupled. Um, Probably was six times. Uh, so I mean, Seriously. so we we were able to make our cash go much further with, you know, the, idea the friends and family things. stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, but uh, as we head towards season two, we're looking at a sponsorship model where where if anybody has a big company that yeah. would their message <laughs> integrated <laughs> into our story, we'd be happy to uh, talk. To, oh. 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 Um, so you said that you you guys have tried pitching to broadcasters, but have you tried pitching to those broadcasters' websites? Yes. Yeah, they're not really interested in doing that. It's no. not really. First of all, there's no you know government it's... funding. And if there's no government funding, no one in Canada is really interested in doing it. It's just starting it. It's starting to come right yeah. now. It's just, it's taken a while from where, I mean, most of us have been doing web for two six, years plus, um, six yeah. years plus, huh. however long. And it's, it's gone to the point where the broadcasters are definitely interested now in their online portals, but... They're it, very risk averse, even in television. I have a completely different attitude towards this, is that, uh, you know, I think that we can build something around Ruby Sky um, much better outside the traditional system. Mm -hmm. And if I can get two seasons online, sort of under our own creative control, then I will be ready to go to the broadcasters with it. Um, you you know, be, and I'll be able to bring an audience with me, and I think they'll be much more interested. But I am talking to them about about website space. Well, and I wonder, with going to broadcast either for their online portals or looking to have it turned into a television series, it becomes an issue of ownership then. Because yes. right now, you guys all own your own content. Yeah. Um, you own, I mean, you get to do whatever you want with it and go wherever you want with storytelling, but then you're, you're not being dictated to about what's going to happen to it. So 
Yeah, and it's not like the it's not like the portals of broadcasters are gonna like it's not like they're gonna throw money at us, yeah. right? So that's exactly it. Like, like if we're gonna work this hard for no money, it might as well be for ourselves yes. as opposed to someone else who's saying, "Oh, you can't say that. You can't do that. No, you can't. No one that's can watch it except on our site, which means no one will watch it." <laughs> um, there's kind of no reason to go to. Uh, we have a lot of questions. <laughs> 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 Let's go left to right. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, have you ever tried going to like Live TV or going to any other? Yeah. Supporters? We're all there. We're all yeah. there. Yeah. We're all there. You're we're all there. Right. Not even going to make bus money. Yeah. It's it's really bad. There's a variety. <laughs> I mean, you get your 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 show out there. Yeah. Oh, that's, different yeah. I mean, but the, for sure there's the, a lot of distribution sectors. Yeah. Oh, and the YouTube uh, revenue sharing model. Like there, there's money, but it's you know we're yeah. it's, it's, it's not it's, quite it's enough. Like, to it's extra, but it won't support the budget. Yeah. Yeah. It's more yeah. or less yeah. about just getting your show somewhere else. Is yeah. what most of those platforms are for. Yeah. Yeah. So mm, yeah. Next yeah. left most person. Have you yeah. had a conversation with sponsors before you've gotten it off the ground? Uh, or do you have to wait and you have to invest for a season or I, two seasons? I didn't even try. The I was just I just like yeah, let's just do it, you know. Like I, I just like you know, like these guys did enter in with a business plan, and my kudos to you. But we just did it, and but we actually we were approached by someone, and we're crossing our fingers that it'll actually happen to move forward. Yes. The current model right now is such that you make a season, and then people are more interested in talking to you. Yeah, if you if you have like a proven viewership yeah. base, proof of concept. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, we want to see the numbers. And then what what are the what, what what do you think the opportunities are for sort of fulfillment of like what are the expectations that that sponsors might have? Like, uh, is it product placement? Is I think it's, it, it, there are two two things we're looking at right now. One is, you know, kind of name over the title mm -hmm. brought to you by a, a lot of sponsors are, are kind of just want to get their name out there in that way. And other brands want to be integrated right into the story. And that's that's kind of what we're looking at is yeah. to take to take a product or a brand and make it part of the story and, and you know take the traditional uh, television advertising 30 second spot thing and turn it on its ear because nobody can fast forward through your message if it comes at the most exciting part of the story right so um, there's also the, the radio the old radio model which is yeah. Something like that you just have like the brought to you by well, and, that, and, yeah. okay, but and that's, that's, that's worked well over the you know like there's a lot of potential there but it's a very <coughs> difficult enterprise to get into. It takes months and months. These people do not move quickly. Uh, they are uh, really risk averse. Um, they understand internet advertising as I pay for a click, I make a sale, I can do that math, that's fine. When you do the branding, it's more of a television model, which is just uh, exposing your brand to eyeballs. And online, they, they're just not doing that. And even for television, it's very challenging to secure sponsorship, even for the biggest shows. Yeah, the, some some of the big companies are starting to come around. Like there are there are branded <coughs> like Trident did. Um, did Trident do it? Yeah, yeah. Like a whole series. They, if they start when the advertiser and go the other direction, they, they're a little bit more into that. Yeah. Yeah. But then you're the branded series, sort of branded yeah. series. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost the a genre series. to itself. But, yeah, but then you're in your like fifth production meeting, and they're saying, "Can our can the main character be doing X or Y or?" You <laughs> see, know? see, I did a branded series, right? And and um, and you know we we're shooting it for you know five thousand dollars, you know, on, oh, yeah. on Queen Street, right? Point and grab, and the sponsor was there on the scene, going, "Well, can we get another beauty shot of the product?" And <laughs> you know, and then it's four in the morning, and you haven't gotten any of your shots for the day. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm, this, will, this will be my last question. <laughs> <laughs> Next point you were talking about uh, doing series for for brands. Do you, are there examples out there of your uh, in the motherhood all, all is all one the work of that you're doing are a series that's created for that for for your your uh, for your work, right? Are there good examples of series yes. that are being yeah. done to support? Brands. There are two ways. There are some that brands start through their advertising agency. So you'll find in the motherhood, uh, uh, Saturn the car did one called I think Novel Adventures. 
um, some car, uh, quite a few GMC car companies. did a Ghost Whisper yeah. spin-off. It was an Axe, Axe the Spray thing. Yeah, and, but then there, are, there are, have been some independent producers who've created web series that have been successful at getting products. Um, the Tops one uh, on Tops about um, guys who have um, uh, a car trading card company. Oh. Um, Felicia Days, the Guild has yeah. some products. Virgin Mattress, Mattress. is it a, is Mattress? Or, or, or yeah. Felicia yeah. Day, uh, not Felicia Day, um, uh, Eliana Douglas's series, oh, um, IKEA. Easy yeah. to Assemble, oh, yeah. is yeah. set inside IKEA. So, oh, gotcha. so there's some really, so, so there's some stuff happening. Um, you know, we're handicapped a little bit in Canada because our shows go to a global audience, but our, the brands that we can work with here in Toronto only have a local budget. So then again, that's another kind of um, issue for us, but we should keep moving this yeah. way. What's your take on crowdfunding? Has anyone tried that? I've tried it. Um, I find the problem with crowdfunding is that the biggest sites we can't use in Canada. So, what kind of funding is this? Crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing. Um, like which is, yeah, Indiegogo is fine, but it also takes a percentage of your profits. So be aware of that going oh. in. Yes. Did no, you? <laughs> not many <laughs> people know this. How much did you raise? Not much. No. I, I mean, granted, I only raised like $100. I was doing a documentary, so it wasn't much, and I was doing it anyways. So, um, <laughs> I ended up. You know, up just ask your reason. friends. Like, yeah. just go and ask your friends for money. You don't need a website to take a commission from that. <laughs> Getting a PayPal button is probably the easiest thing that you can do yeah. on Which your we've, site. We've had a, a bit of success with that. Like, like I remember the the day, the morning after our first episode launched, uh, some girl from Hong Kong donated twenty five dollars to us, nice. and I was like, like I, I couldn't believe it. And I, we've had a couple, couple here and there. I mean, it hasn't totaled to very much, but. It's been, it's already, we know it's going to be very helpful because we're, we're also trying to submit to festivals and all that stuff, and that costs money. And, and um, so. Well, the best part is you know that you're the band in Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and that's the thing sometimes. It's a location. Yeah, but you can do those people. At this point, I've been, I've been personally emailing them back and saying, and I've been telling them how we're using their money and, and uh, things like that. But then, like, people, I mean, I, I also just thought, like, I got this great message, I want to put it out there. And, and so, in a way, the, the feedback, that's going to sound so cheesy, but the feedback we get has been payment enough, you know, like, uh, but it's, it's true though, I mean, like, you know, we've had kids saying like, hey, I showed your show to my dad, and that's how I came back to him, and now my life is better, mm -hmm. right? Oh, that's yeah. Pretty cool. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. All right, so great, he's been waiting for Yeah, he's been waiting <laughs> So, you're next. Okay. You're, okay, forget it. <laughs> Keep your eye on forever. I have kind of a two-part question, and the first part is about how to find viewers, and the second part is about how to find shows. Like, I'm, you mentioned the Guild. I'm familiar with the Guild, but only because I'm a WoW nerd. Like, I don't, uh, I, I wouldn't know how to find, like, all you guys have great shows. I've never heard of any of them. And I would love to know, where can I go to find them? Like, is there... That's the biggest problem. That's absolutely yeah. the biggest problem. But you know what? There's a lot coming about, like, there are, there's a website, for instance, called, we were just talking about earlier, Slevisodes, and that just sort of, Collate a bunch of things. They have a, they have a weekly uh, um, schedule. Like schedule, they tweet about, about it and they touch. It's kind of like an online. This girl thing. has a podcast. She reviews things. Listen to uh, Candice's podcast and and What's she'll. Podcast called? Uh, it's called Limited Release. Oh. I've actually oh. talked oh. about two different shows. Yeah. <laughs> and, like to know you. Hello. <laughs> I, I've already. I've already made note. <laughs> and uh, but then like. See, the thing, what, one of the things about, about getting the views, which is often, a, um, oh, here's another one for you, is Wednesday afternoons at yeah. 2 p.m. Oh, Eastern, uh, there is the web series chat, hashtag web series chat on Twitter. But that's and, more for producers than But you know what, though, a lot, of, a lot of, I've gotten a lot of people f um, views saying, hey, I found you because of, and they're not uh -huh. the filmmakers. So people, yeah. it is, it's become about the community of, of makers, but it's, I mean, it's out there on Twitter, so. Um, but, but there I think are also the key a number is, of internet networks now yeah. that are pro popping up where they specialize in web series, make it easier. Um, Mingle Media TV, I think yeah. a few of us are on there. Digital Chick TV has us. And do you, they yeah, they're, yeah, we're on. Um, uh, I just met Darren in. Oh, yeah. Digital chip. D digital digital chip. 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 TV. But then the other thing too uh, is uh, like if, if it's a niche web series, there's the real strength is when your story is catered to a niche audience, right? Yeah. And that's why the guild, like you found the guild because you're a WoW fan, right? Yeah. 
and I don't, I'm guessing you're not a lesbian, but <laughs> in the inside, you know, like, and, but like our greatest success came from uh, the folks at After Ellen, which is a, a lesbian pop culture uh, website, and they they started hosting, and they host like every lesbian web series you can think of in um, in variety of languages, and like 40% of our viewership came from them in the beginning. So I think it's a lot of it's finding it, like, and that's something that I think that we're all trying to do is is learn where are are these potential portals, right? Because it's the niche stuff that really it's succeeds. all about talking directly to your fans. Yeah. Do you have yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, we're learning so much from each other. We've yeah. all sort of um, gotten to know each other, you know, a little bit over the last few, I mean, Very recent some, of, some oh, of us have known no. each other longer, but we sort of collect kind of building our, 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 our community. And if you are in the web series business or thinking about getting into it, we do have a Facebook group and we'd love for you to join us because it's all about... Um, What's the name of that? Toronto Web Series Community? Yeah. Which yeah, might become simple. a Canadian Web Series Community. We're yes. been debating about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We'll, um, we'll all tweet the link for you at some point because it's uh, not an easy link to tell you, but yes. we'll, we'll make it known to you. So if you're looking for new series to check out, Scott's done a really, really nice site called oh, that's Watch nice. List. And oh, it reviews yeah. actual web series, um, and there's like probably 50 or 60. Web yeah, the idea on there, is yeah. because when we started doing this, everyone said, I want to watch web series, how do I find them? And, and I didn't know how to answer that beyond, you know, spend an hour on YouTube typing in random things. <laughs> the idea behind the web series, uh, the web uh, website, the watch list, it just a, it's a place where audiences can go, and it's not, like, a lot of the other stuff, like the episodes that we're talking about and the web series communities, they're really great, but it's all about this show is out, and this show is out, and this show is out. But online, it's not like TV where you have to watch it every week or it's gone, yeah. you know? Online, you put a show up, and people can find it new, and it's new to them for the forever, forever, right? Yeah. Well, it's, it's it's like the viewership of, of television is changing. People are, are buying DVDs or downloading or streaming and watching whole seasons at a time. Mm -hmm. People people are less likely to, to set their schedules around a programming schedule nowadays. And so the that's that's a great thing about the viewership. Is that you know you sit down, you can watch 15 episodes, take a break, watch 10 more. Can we get you? Uh, yes, I was kind of wondering what your uh, what your thoughts on the uh, International Academy of Web Television and Heinz, or and part of that, the Streaming Awards. Well, if they're no longer behind the Streaming Awards. They've right. severed right. themselves from them. I I don't know why. There's some no, the, horrible gossip the, the, behind the, it. As I, as I, I understand, just joined, it. and as far as I can tell, they don't do much. Yeah, <laughs> actually, that's why because uh, I I know a couple of the uh, I know Tina Cisa Ward is the creator of. Anyone but me, another great web yeah. series. That's she was running for the board and she, didn't make it. Yeah, and, but one of the things she's been saying to me is she really wants to encourage all of us to get on board because right now it's very New York and LA centric. Yeah. And she's like, you know, if we could get some Torontonians on there, that'd be great, you know, but, so that we're not bickering about red carpet or no red carpet, you know, but, but they, they, they are going to do another streaming They life. don't seem to be very. Um, Interested in the eye in international. No, not at all. I, like, that's, 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 what what she's, that's why she's encouraging that's us to join. I find, but I find that's ninety very... bucks. I don't want to spend. food for the day. I know. I know. Yeah. So think of what you can do with them. <laughs> how big is your viewership on your different shows? Do you have any idea what yeah. your how big your audiences are? Uh, for for microwave, which is our our pilot uh, show, like we have other shows, but we just I think we're we're at one hundred and ninety today, one hundred ninety thousand. Um, That's we, total, total views? Yeah, total total channel views. We just had uh, a couple good weeks, or like four good weeks, where we were getting five or six thousand hits a day. So may um, we suggest that you put porn in your titles? That is the <laughs> 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 I, 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 I worked on a show oh, called <laughs> Porcelain Pussy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a composer, and I, I... I love that short, by the way. Oh, I did my, the music for that. And so I put all my work up on YouTube. I couldn't believe the number of hits it got. But it had nothing... And then I realized, that's because the word pussy's in it. Yep, that's <laughs> correct. So and it works two ways. all my titles now. It pussy <laughs> Discovery Channel. <laughs> pussy works two ways story. on the web, because the web is for two things, right? Porn and cats. <laughs> <laughs> Like a double <laughs> 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 we, we, we put uh, 
uh, Ruby Sky on a site, um, and um, for some reason they interpreted it as 18 and over, and combined with our, ta our tag words, which are tweens, include the words tween sisters, we got zillions of hits, and it was almost, almost a shame to tell them no, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we got hate mail. Because we what is this? <laughs> I protest. Actually, when, when you look at the views per episode, the, it, it's it's true. The, the the videos that have thumbnails of, of my two castmates kissing have by far more views than the other ones, and, and I'm exploiting it. Do you I'm, think that advertisers would be interested in these metrics, though? Like, uh, Yes, they, the, they the, are. The raw numbers aren't the whole story. Yeah, there's, the advertisers kind of know that. Yeah, and there's the retention know. rate as well. Yeah, um, and we're we're sitting about seventy five percent, and the, the retention is how, the percentage of the audience that watches for how long. Yeah. For each. If you're trying to trick people with titles yeah. or thumbnails, then what's going to happen is you get a whole lot of starts, which looks great on your YouTube raw numbers. Yeah. But when you start looking into your retention rate, they're all gone in five seconds, ten yeah. seconds. And that's you know our goal is to actually make something that people like to watch, <laughs> not to trick YouTube or Google or anything like that. So we that's find, what your goals are. We find Facebook is a really great source of audience. Like our audience that comes from Facebook, um, one in three will stick around and really watch and spend a lot of time on the site and on the, uh, watching videos. So How we're very. How does that work? Do you share it and then someone else shares it and someone else That, else that and we've, we've goofed around a little bit with some Facebook advertising as well. Which Facebook is ads, we found very really successful. Well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. really, really cool. successful. Yeah. There's also a and Facebook touch. pays us to tell you that. <laughs> We're only true. They're there, custom, a, right? People find them because of what their interests are. Yeah. We've got some. Oh, well, we'll go with you afterwards. In YouTube, there is something named the YouTube channel. So, have you already created the YouTube channel and then you posted all the series? Yes, yes, yes. Because on YouTube, you can also, they are engaging in over layer for the video. Yes, yes. So, you can get more money. Yeah, I believe I believe we are we all have channels. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I believe we all have But are you talking about like partnerships no, or channels? Partnerships. Yeah, the, the, the partnership thing is weird. Like we we didn't like I know some folks get partnership right away. Yeah. We didn't get it until like when was it was was our all of our episodes up even or it Almost. was weird. Like we were like Almost, yeah. in the writing for a while, and and uh, plus they didn't like. I think because we had so much music, they thought that we were stealing it. Yeah, we because we're like, oh, here's a contract. Like we scanned it, emailed right. it to YouTube, saying, see, really, we have permission. We don't. We don't have partnership. There. No. Um, Somebody has to introduce us. Face <laughs> <laughs> with this. Um, okay, I have a couple questions. I guess I was just wondering in terms of. Um, the like, retention, does YouTube tell you how long somebody actually used yeah. it for? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, they have an interesting feature where they'll actually tell you where people rewind to. Yeah. So oh, that you can see fire. like what parts are like hot, they call the hotness. It's actually, they it's, actually it's have a, a graph that shows you at which points of your show people are like most interested and least interested. And I'm not really sure how they know. No. It's perfect but, for the yeah, it's perfect for development because you can you can like make an episode, go back, check it out, oh hey, that's what the audience likes. Not to cater to an audience, but you get you get direct feedback. You, yeah. Know, yeah. you know what they're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm curious too because I'm um, also we're all doing a dramatic series here, and I'm just curious if you're familiar at all with like nonfiction episodes, like um, people who do more gonzo journalist type thing or, or something like that, and where the sort of channels they go through. So I just look at the IPF thing, and I think it's only dramatic series. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. You know, online, the uh, documentary style or the lifestyles type programming is already very well established. Um, like, it's kind of what YouTube has been made for. So, uh, it doesn't have a lot of the challenges that a narrative form will have. And you can just say, you know, I'm doing a, a stand up review of Lindsay Lohan's latest court appearance, right? Um, and that'll well get the views because it's it's actual subject matter that's already in the news, it's already... There's someone actually like, reviewing court appearances? Because that would be a It's question. a good website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody should make that show, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, sorry, I can't see that. Um, I was getting, sort of as a follow-up to the uh, Facebook ads sort of question, how much would you 
spend on those ads. And um, I know it's kind of hard to be able to sort of tell what, what the kind of return that you would get on, on that investment, but uh, uh, do you have, would you have any ideas as far as how, how effective that has been? First, the it really, <laughs> really depends on your goals. Um, if your goal is to make money, then you want to make sure that you got something to sell. Right. Because the ads model is never going to do it. Like it'll always be more expensive to bring people to your site than the money you get from ads mm -hmm. on your site. So, you know, if you want to make money through ads, but then have a product. And if that's what you're going to do, then why are you making a web series? Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, now you might as well just sell t-shirts. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's uh, just you, but this is like, this is the data that they can provide to you. So, and it, like this green graph here is showing us like right here where the most popular spot is. I'll let you guess what part it is. I don't know. Well, it's actually not the kiss. How would I? Um, but they'll show you. It's, it's about to be the kiss. It's about, it is leading up to the kiss, indeed. And, uh, but I think it takes from how far people go and then go back and rewatch. And then, like, it shows you, you know, you can see very specifically when each episode was posted. This, this is like, you know, our, our spikes of when each new episode was. This is the day we added Spanish subtitles. And the subtitles, that's okay. yes. Subtitles, subtitles, subtitles. This, this highest peak right here, that was the day we won our award. I don't know if that's like coincidence or not, but, um, and like it even shows you what countries you're being watched. I'm actually really impressed that a show about a girl coming out is is massive in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> they got one. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty fascinating. Guys, I think we do have to wrap up. Oh yeah. Like now. Thanks for your attention. Thank you so much. Yeah. For